Over the past month or so, there has been this eerie silence out of Green Bay. Remember a couple months back, all of the stories about Aaron Rodgers wanting out of Green Bay? It was talked about nonstop for a couple of weeks. Then all of a sudden, silence. Maybe, maybe even a false sense of hope for Packers fans. The rumors have died down. Maybe the Packers are working things out with Aaron Rodgers. There were even some reports that the relationship could possibly be mended in Green Bay between Aaron Rodgers and the Packers. If you've been following this channel, then you already know. There is no mending this relationship. There is so much false information out there, especially on Twitter, it's hard to know what to believe sometimes. But like I have said countless times this offseason, I don't see any way Aaron Rodgers suits up for the Packers this season, definitely not after this season. And this season's really in doubt, to be honest with you. This season is in doubt. There's just too much damage. I've compared the saga in Green Bay to a marriage before. In a marriage, or in any relationship, it's all about give and take. There is no such thing as unconditional love or loyalty besides the relationship between a parent and a child. Other than that, all other relationships in life are about two parties benefiting each other. Once one party in the relationship starts to feel taken advantage of, or like they're not getting what they want out of the relationship, they start to notice minor things. In Aaron Rodgers' case, the Packers deciding to participate in a joint practice with the Texans a couple of years ago. That pissed him off. Aaron Rodgers, for years, begging them for help at wide receiver. And those requests going unanswered. Hell, instead of drafting a damn receiver, the Packers go out and they draft Jordan Love, Aaron Rodgers' potential replacement. The Packers have screwed this thing up for years now. And just like in a marriage, there comes a point where your wife, or in this case, Aaron Rodgers, there comes a point where they have enough. And once people reach that breaking point, there is no coming back. The only solution, divorce. That is where we're at in Green Bay, the divorce stage. Yesterday, I said the best way to predict the future, look to the past. We've seen the same story, almost the exact same story, and Green Bay with Brett Favre. It's crazy to see the parallels between what happened with Brett Favre and the Packers and what's happening right now with Aaron Rodgers. When the Packers drafted Aaron Rodgers back in 2005, Brett Favre was pissed off about it. The big difference was Green Bay struggled in the two years after Aaron Rodgers was drafted. So the obvious questions were coming in. When will the Packers move on from Brett Favre? You fast forward to the 2007 offseason, and Brett Favre had reached the peak of his frustration. He knew the divorce was coming. He knew it was imminent. He felt like he was being forced into retirement, and he still had a few good years left in him. The 2007 season, Brett Favre, one of the best years of his career, he was one of the best quarterbacks in the NFL that year, led the Packers to 13-3 to the NFC Championship game where they ended up losing to Eli Manning and the Giants. The Packers are hoping for that same result this year. Here's the problem, though. That scenario, it was used up last season. 2020 was as motivated as I have ever seen Aaron Rodgers throughout his career. He was out to prove a point last season. Not to the league. Not even to himself. He was proving a point to the Packers. You draft my replacement, I'm about to show you that you screwed up. It is hard to recapture that motivation for a second straight year. For one thing, it didn't work. It didn't change the Packers' future plans. They are still moving forward with Jordan Love at some point in the near future. Besides winning a Super Bowl, what more could Aaron Rodgers have proven last season? He was the damn MVP of the league. I think he has reached a point where he knows that the future has already been decided. And nothing that he says, nothing that he does, nothing that he accomplishes is going to change anything. So Aaron Rodgers is to the point now where it's like to hell with them. I don't want to play here anymore. I don't want to give another year of my career to a team that doesn't want, or more importantly, doesn't appreciate me. 
Look, this situation in Green Bay is not about money. At one point, there were some sites floating the idea that more money or a contract extension would solve this problem with Aaron Rodgers. That's not the case. Yesterday, Adam Schefter confirmed this. This is not about money. Aaron Rodgers feels disrespected. Remember back in May when he was on Kenny Main's last Sports Center broadcast? At one point, he started talking about all the people that he liked and respected in the Packers organization. He even mentioned the respect and the admiration that he has for Jordan Love. Guess who Aaron Rodgers left out? General Manager Brian Gutenkunst, Packers owner Mark Murphy. Now, it's not like Aaron Rodgers just forgot about them. He didn't mention them on purpose. One thing Aaron Rodgers has done differently from Brett Favre, Aaron Rodgers has kept his cards close to his vest. Brett Favre was vocal about his displeasure with the Packers. Aaron Rodgers mostly has remained silent. The few times he has spoken about it or he's been asked about it, if he doesn't avoid the question altogether, he gives these cryptic answers. Last week, for example, last week when he participated in the match against Tom Brady, the golf thing, he was asked by someone who was going to be the week one starter in Green Bay. Aaron Rodgers simply said, I don't know. For the first time in 16 years, he has refused to participate in off-season workouts, didn't attend minicamp last month. Both the Packers and Aaron Rodgers have three options at this point, with really one option being the, the ideal option. The Packers, they could play hardball, refuse to trade Aaron Rodgers, and have him be their starter this season. Aaron Rodgers could decide he's going to sit out, refuse to play. Or Green Bay could finally come to their senses and trade Aaron Rodgers. This is the only option that makes sense. Aaron Rodgers is notoriously stubborn. If he doesn't want to play in Green Bay, he's not going to play in Green Bay. But let's just pretend for a second. Let's pretend for a second that he decides to acquiesce. He realizes that the Packers are not going to trade him, so his only option is to play in Green Bay. If you're the Packers, do you really want a pissed off Aaron Rodgers as your quarterback all season? I know some will say, well, he was pissed off last year and damn near made it to a Super Bowl, which is true. But like I said, last year, Aaron Rodgers hadn't given up on the Packers. Last year, he still had hope. Last year, he was still willing to be there. He doesn't want to be there anymore. His stance has not changed. If the Packers play hardball and essentially force Aaron Rodgers to be back, it is going to be a distraction all season. After every game, the questions from the media will be relentless. It's going to create a divide in the locker room. You're putting your other players in a position to where they're essentially forced to choose sides. Aaron Rodgers will become a distraction. And that is a death sentence in the NFL. This is the most competitive league we have in this country. How many times have we heard elite head coaches or just head coaches in general say one of the most important things throughout the season is to minimize distractions? It's kind of hard to do that when the distraction is your franchise quarterback. Adam Schefter made an excellent point yesterday. He mentioned Tom Brady envy across the NFL. Tom Brady went to Tampa. He got every player that he wanted. Antonio Brown, Gronk. Tom Brady had a say in how the offense was run. He was respected in Tampa. He did things his way. And he won a Super Bowl. All of that stuff Adam Schefter mentioned is the opposite of what's happened the last few years in Green Bay. Aaron Rodgers has been ignored. This relationship is too far gone. The damage has already been done. The best and really the only option the Packers have is to trade him and spread his dead cap money over the next two years. Start your future with Jordan Love. You're going to piss off, and you're likely going to lose Devontae Adams. But that is a price that you're going to have to be willing to pay. Because if you go with the alternative, and Aaron Rodgers feels forced to play in Green Bay, it is going to be a long season, and not a successful one. All right, what do you guys think? 
Should the Packers trade Aaron Rodgers? Or do you think after everything that's happened, this relationship can be repaired? Sound off in the comments below. Make sure to like and subscribe. Click the notification bell to receive all notifications from the channel. Best way to contact me is by email at btlkc84 at gmail.com. KC underscore BTL84 on Twitter. I'll see you guys later.